is our Pegasus architecture. Basically, it shows we have a centralized server where the E3 bridge runs here in our corporate shared service center. But of course, we have for communication purposes in the local subsidiaries a thinner version as well. In all areas, whether we integrate amongst SAP or whether we integrate externally in whatsoever manner, it runs via the bridge. And we have also integrated our own Salesforce automation tool. Two and a half thousand people are carrying our own mobile sales solution where they can select the product catalog and have the custom itinerary and all the goods in online basically and all that comes through the backbone of SAP. So that is as well connected already via the bridge and uh, works fine. So what you see in the next page is our rollout schedule and we clearly have uh, given ourselves a deadline till early 2008 where we have to deploy Pegasus across DKSH. Otherwise, if you, if you have such a huge project and if you do this too long, you over-challenge your organization and the risk of failure is too high. So we do an accelerated rollout and the acceleration comes, of course, based on our utilization level of E3. Uh, right now, we already have done China, we have done Singapore, we have done Malaysia, uh, we have done Philippines, we have done Hong Kong and Taiwan. We are currently doing Thailand, Indonesia, and Japan, and the other countries are coming subsequently. What we realize now is that we have around about a reuse level of more than 60% across the countries. Reuse level in the sense of whatever we are doing in terms of interfaces, we can use the services in other countries again. Of course, the details need to be adjusted and customized to a certain extent, but we have an overall reuse level of 60%. For us, one of the most considerable advantages, our integration time for new business partners has been drastically reduced from around three months to 15 days. In earlier days, when we got a new principal and we needed a new order interface, we needed a new trade return interface, a new invoice interface, it took us around three months, and we already thought that was excellent timing for such a complex project. And now with E3, we are able to cut this down to below 15 days. And this gives us, of course, a, a huge business advantage, a huge unique selling point, particularly uh, considering the dynamic of our business. Now, if you look overall, what benefits have we reaped with C3? Of course, we reduced TCO. We use much less the time, much less the effort to reach our targets. We have, and this is a very important one, uh, an absolute shift from people dependency to process dependency is something which I uh, mentioned earlier as well. We are on a journey to embark to CMML level 5 to make sure that our guys are learning to get away from individualism and people dependency and make sure that we have put proper processes in place because IT is absolutely mission critical for DKSH. So process dependency, very important point. If you understand UML and if you understand model-driven integration, you will understand that with designing the interface, you have the documentation already on the machine. And that's one of the most challenging points to get from developers the documentation, right? They are like salespeople. They keep all the information in their heads. And with E2E, they cannot do this anymore. They have to document it, and you have it on the machine. We have a drastic reduction of cycle time. We are able now to connect our customers much, much quicker. We have a huge, unique selling point. That's what we see under IT agility to enable our business. And, of course, C2E helps us dramatically to position ourselves to a higher CMMI and IT level, which is very important being a, a highly quality-driven company as DKSH. I think that's a very nice conclusion. Dieter, I would like to thank you very much for having shared your experiences with us. Given that there is still a shortage of compelling, massive-scale SOA projects that do have delivered such quantifiable business value, I'm certain this is an encouraging example for many organizations. Dieter's presentation has probably answered quite a few questions you might have had at the beginning, but I'm also sure it has spawned some new ones. For example, if model-driven integration and direct model execution could be a good solution for your own situation. I would like to encourage you to come forward with your questions and get in touch with us here at E2E. You can use the email alias info at e2ebridge.com to post your questions and you can find more information about model-driven integration and direct model execution on our website at e2ebridge.com, including a written case study about the DKSH project. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.